What's up guys, in today's video we're going to be modeling this cool little piece. I'm going to show you how to model it, render it, do a little bit of touch up work, and basically make it a portfolio ready piece. Let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to define the silhouette, so basically uh, this rectangular prism type of shape that we have going on. So what we're going to do is just add in a cube and scale this cube uh, on the X a little bit. And then a little bit on the Z as well. Now this thing doesn't have to be like super wide, but I want to make this more or less a decent height. So maybe right around here could be okay, a little bit longer. This looks like a decent size. Cool, so now what I want to do is, um, actually I don't think I mentioned it, but make sure you apply the scale. You press Control A and apply the scale. Otherwise, whenever you scale things, if you try to bevel it, uh, sometimes you'll get these problems where the bevel's kind of skewed. So make sure you apply the scale with Control A. And I'm going to turn cavity back on here. And now what I want to do is just go into edge mode and bevel these two edges right here. We're not going to make it like a super large bevel, but something kind of like that. So just one segment is all we need. And then right here, I want to make a nice round bevel. So we'll do that. Maybe right about there. And then right here, I want to do the same thing. And I'm just going to do a quick symmetry there and then over to there. So if you have a mesh machine, you can just press Alt X in edit mode and basically just do one of these. Um, if you're not using mesh machine, you can do this in hard ops with the Alt X command and just run a symmetry here. So now we kind of have this cool looking shape and I also want to flip this to the bottom so we'll do an Alt X to the bottom as well. And now we have this simple kind of um, rectangular prism type of shape going on. Alright awesome, so now what I want to do is I want to make just some a little bit more cuts in here just to kind of define the form a little bit more. So I think what I'm going to do is on the cube, I'm going to scale this down. And eventually what we're going to do with this cube is we're going to fuse it to this mesh and then run a bevel so it's kind of fused to it. Which means um, we need to make sure this isn't like this big because then when I try to run a bevel it's going to hit this bevel right here. So I'm just going to kind of make it right to about that point and then we'll scale this a bit on the Y as well. This should be a decent size. We can scale that a little bit more on the X kind of like that. And then we'll just go into side view and kind of see how that looks. I think that'll be a good size. Then once again, we'll press Control A, uh, apply the scale. And what I'm going to do here is just simply um, select all these edges here. And the easiest way to do that is by pressing Control Alt left click. And this will select all the edges in the same direction. So we're going to bevel that. And we'll just go to about here. And we'll just sharpen this. I'm going to sharpen this as well. And apparently 3.3, whenever you shade smooth now, apparently it also enables auto smooth, which is pretty cool. I just haven't installed 3.3 yet. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to union this piece to this one. So select this, shift click on this, and then I'm just going to press Q. And then in hard ops, we'll run a union boolean. And um, let's hide that. Let's go ahead and apply this. So we'll apply that. Or you can just control click on sharpen. And what I want to do now is I want to make that nice bevel to kind of make this fuse to the mesh. This is going to give it a really natural mechanical feel that's going to make this thing look a lot more elegant, a lot more natural, and it's just going to increase the overall form. So I'm going to alt click these edges here, and that doesn't want to select. So what you can also do is run an L select with Mesh Machine, like that, or you can just select an edge and then alt click the edge again. Um, once again, if you don't have Mesh Machine, you'll just have to control click around manually. Not really a big deal, but I'm just going to click and then alt click with mesh machine. We're going to make a nice size bevel right there. Maybe a little bit smaller. Maybe a little bit bigger actually. This is the type of thing you just have to kind of feel out. Sometimes you can even do this with overlays turned off and kind of see how it looks. But um, now what I want to do is give this area a nice little chamfer. So we're going to bevel this. That looks pretty good. And then we can simply move this back so it's a tad bit closer to this other area. And then we'll just do a quick symmetry over to the other side. And now we have this really nice um, looking shape here. 
Awesome, so now what I want to do is right here in the front, I want to make a nice um, nice little cut. We're going to put some sort of like, I don't know, a little something here in the front. So I'm just going to go into front view. I'm going to add in another cube. I'm going to scale that down. I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to kind of move that in. And then once again, just apply the scale with control A. And then if you control alt click the edges, we can select them all in the same direction. And then just put a nice little bevel right here. Sharpen that. And now what I want to do is simply um, run a difference boolean. So shift click on this, Q, and then difference. And now we have this pretty cool uh, looking effect right here. We could make it a little bit larger maybe. So if I just um, undo that and go into the cutter, if I go into edit mode for the cutter and select it, I can just press Alt S and that'll scale it along the normals. And then as long as I turn on the offset even, it should be nice and even. That looks a little bit too much, maybe right about here. That should be good. And I'll just go ahead and control click on Sharpen. I'm just going to apply that. Actually, you know what? Before we apply that, I want to show you a cool trick. With hard ops, if you press Q and then go into ever scroll to recall that cutter, what we can actually do here is we can press Q, go to settings, and then shift click on shade solid here. And that'll basically um, duplicate that cutter, turn it into a solid, and then move it outside of the cutter's collection. So now when I press shift 2 to hide the cutter's collection, this one won't be hidden. So really easy way to kind of get a duplicate. But what I do want to do is apply this Boolean now. And then alt click on these edges here. I'll just do a mesh machine. I'll select. And then I'm just going to put a nice uh, chamfer on this area. And just to recalculate that auto smooth, we'll shift click on sharpen. There we go. And then for this one, we'll go ahead and put a nice little chamfer there in the front as well. And now we kind of have this cool looking piece. And maybe just to give it a little bit more visual interest, um, we could put some like cuts here in the middle, but. Um, let's just see how it looks and maybe we'll do you know one of these we'll press the V key to add an array and then the X key to flip the axis and then you know we could do something press enter do something like that maybe even mirror it to the bottom looks pretty cool so this is looking pretty neat almost like um, one of those portable uh, iPhone chargers you might find I don't know, just a cool looking shape is what I'm going for here. And maybe what I'll do is go into the D menu for box cutter. We'll use an N-GON cutter. And I could even do something kind of like this. Scale that a bit on the Y maybe. And then we'll just mirror it to the bottom. That looks pretty neat. And I'm actually going to scale this a little bit more on the Y. I'm going to have to shift click on sharpen, adjust that auto smooth. And then I'm just going to apply that boolean because what I want to do here is um, basically just run a bevel. We'll do a bevel there. We'll do a bevel here. And just do some quick symmetries like that. You know what else we could do? We could actually put a nice, um, a nice little chamfer around the outside edge. So I can just alt click. Uh, maybe we'll have to L select instead. We're just going to bevel this right here. Looks good to me. And now we have this nice little chamfer around the outside. And then maybe what I'll do is put like a hole here in the top. I think that could be a nice um, addition to the form here. So we'll do something like this. Apply the scale. And then once again, just put a nice bevel on this area. And just run a difference boolean or something and we can apply that so maybe here on the inside we could bevel that and then around here we could do that symmetrize it to the bottom looks pretty cool so you're going to see most of this um most of the visual appeal of this model comes from the bevels nothing else really pretty much the entire effect of this model is being defined by all the bevels we have going on so the nice fuse bevel here the chamfers around the edges you know these concave types of cuts here with bevels in it and same for the front it's pretty much all defined by bevels and I just noticed that for some reason 
I think I accidentally removed that cut when I did my symmetry. Not a big deal because what I can do is just duplicate this piece. I can just remove um, the boolean and the mirror here. And I'll just scale this up a little bit. We'll do this in edit mode, alt S. And just run the difference boolean again. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Sometimes if you symmetrize a piece that is not symmetrical, that might happen, but not a big deal. Looks good. And now I just want to make a few cuts here on the top. I think it could be, could be uh, kind of cool. So what we're going to do is, I don't know, do something kind of interesting like this. I do not want to bevel it, so let me press B. It looks kind of cool. And I'm just instead of mirroring the actual piece, because now we're going to have a cut on this side, which I don't want, it's no longer symmetrical on the y-axis. So instead of mirroring the actual piece, what I can do is mirror the cutter itself. So if we shift click on this mesh, Alt X and then run the mirror. Now we're just going to be mirroring the cutter instead of the actual mesh. I could scale this a bit on the Y perhaps. Maybe even mirror this down. And I don't know. Maybe I'll add one more to the array and just kind of separate that so it's more or less spaced out evenly. Kind of like that. Cool, so now the last thing I want to add here are some cuts, um, little circular cuts here on the left and on the right. So to do that, we're just going to add in a cylinder and we'll give this like 64 vertices, sharpen it, and then rotate it 90 degrees. And I'm just going to put this one right about here. And then I'm going to mirror this one. Um, what we can do is press Alt X and then press the Tab key. That'll flip it to the 3D cursor. And if it doesn't flip it to the 3D cursor, make sure when you press tab, this option here for cursor is turned on. This is basically just an advanced menu. So instead of mirroring over the origin point, it will mirror over the 3D cursor. We can do that and kind of scale it. Looks decent. And then we can go ahead and apply that mirror. And now what I want to do is shift click and union these pieces to this one. So Q, booleans, and then union. And we'll just um, we'll apply that boolean in this one as well. And all I really want to do now is just alt click, alt shift click, all around here. We're going to make a nice round bevel kind of fusing the mesh. And then here we're going to make a nice little um, chamfer kind of like that. Symmetrize and we're good to go. And I guess the last thing I'll do is go into the circular cutter in the D menu. I'm going to set the vertex count for this circle cut to 64. We'll click on that. And if I go up here to the snap menu and hold control, it's actually going to snap to the center. So I can just hold control, kind of cut out like this. And then if I press shift T, it'll actually add a taper. I'm not sure that's the effect I want though, but it could actually work. And then maybe on the inside here, I can make a nice little bevel cool and then I'm just gonna go to um, with the cutter selected we'll go to the settings menu and hard ops and shift click on shade solid and it'll just basically make this for us I don't know make a bevel right here I'd have to apply the scale and kind of scale that up I'm just trying to make a cool interesting shape here really Looks good, and let me go ahead and recall this cutter again because I need to mirror this to the other side as well. And I also need to mirror this piece to the other side as well. So we basically have a duplicate. And we could mirror it to the other side, why not? So we'll first mirror the cutters, and then we'll also mirror the piece that's on the inside like that. So nice and easy. All right, awesome. So now what I usually like to do at this type of stage is I like to define a few small tertiary elements. And these don't have to be anything crazy, but they really enhance the overall form because the small tertiary elements, although you can see them, they don't distract from the main form and they can really emphasize how it looks. And one final thing, notice how there's kind of like this hard edge right here. To fix that, um, basically we just press Q and Control Shift click on Sharpen. What that will do is recalculate the areas that are considered sharp, which are basically all the you know chamfers and sharper edges. 
and I'm just going to shift click on sharpen to adjust the auto smooth here and that should fix up. Cool, so for those tertiary elements I'm just going to make them very simple. I'm going to put a small cut right here, press B to bevel that and then we'll just um, recall that cutter and mirror it over and maybe make this a little bit smaller. Apply the scale and mirror it to this side. And there we go. Alright, so we're done with the model and I don't think a lot of you guys have too many problems when it comes to modeling. If you do, that'll eventually uh, sort itself out because modeling it just comes down to practice. You have to do, you have to model over and over and over again until the keys become muscle memory. So that might take time, but a lot of you I've noticed have pretty decent modeling skills, even if you're still kind of new. A lot of you guys are pretty good at modeling. What I do notice though is that a lot of you need to improve on your area when it comes to presentation. So what I also want to add in this tutorial is how you can present this in a really effective way that is just going to be way better than what most of your competition is going to be doing. So I'm going to show you how to add nice contrasting materials, a nice lighting setup, and also just a nice render. So my general rule of thumb, guys, is no more than two to three main materials on your mesh, okay? So the primary form is going to have one material. The secondary elements will probably have a second material, maybe darker, lighter. And the tertiary elements might have like a third level material. Could even be a different color. Uh, for this particular model, I'm just going to go with uh, two materials. So what I'm going to do here is, first of all, let's, um, let's go up here to the Hard Ops menu and go to this little star. And if we turn on this option here for blank matte similar to viewport, what it will do is give you a shade of gray. So if I press Alt M and add a material, it's going to just do, uh, I can do this multiple times, it's just going to give us a nice little gray material. And I could do the same thing to these other elements here. I could press Alt M and cycle through this a few times until we kind of have, you know, a different darker color. And then I'll press Alt M here and we'll give this the material 002. So this one's a little bit darker. And now we kind of have this cool effect. Now it might look different in material mode. We'll fix that, don't worry. Uh, for right now, I just kind of want to get a nice setup here. And additionally, what we could do, check this out. What I could actually do here is I could go into box cutter and maybe, I don't know, click here or so cut down and then press the X key to run a slice and now this will be a separate piece and what I could do here is press Alt M and give that a different material as well which could be pretty cool but um, I'm actually just gonna leave a slice there I don't know if I want to make it a different material and I can actually mirror on this direction since um, can I yeah I can mirror on this direction and then I also need to mirror this piece back over as well there we go Cool, so now we have kind of like a basic setup here. We have a few secondary materials um, and like a primary material here. As a matter of fact, what I will do is give this one that second material and maybe I could even pull these out a little bit. Scale them up a bit more, pull this out and maybe run a slice on this one as well. Actually, I'm gonna make sure we're doing the one that's the main piece not being mirrored run a slice and then maybe the piece connected to it could be like that other material just to kind of give it a nice separation looks pretty cool all right awesome so now what we're going to do is we're going to go into look dev mode so material mode and basically what hard ops does is it gives you some random like material settings metallic roughness whatever um, i'm just going to adjust these a little bit so the first thing i want to do i do want to keep it metallic but i do not want this to be so glossy so we're going to pull this up to maybe like I don't know, it could be like 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, because generally a metallic thing is going to have a little bit of glossiness to it and aren't as rough, so we'll do that. And then for this piece right here, we'll basically do the same thing. We'll increase this roughness, and we're just going to change the colors here a little bit, so I could make this a tad bit brighter. And what I do want to do is change the um, world lighting we have going on. So right now, we're using this little orb right here. I'm going to use a different one. So the one I use is called Abandoned Slipway. We can go here and choose it, but if you don't have it installed, um, I'll have my editor pop it up on the screen. Go to polyhaven.com, download the Abandoned Slipway HDRI. It's totally free, and what you can do here is go to the cog wheel, and you can install that HDRI. So we're just going to get a different set of lighting here. And then I can make this a little bit more, 
you know, glossy on this one. And just kind of mess with the different colors. Basically all you need is a nice contrast between the lighter and the darker color, so that's all I'd really recommend doing. Um, let me make this a little bit, I guess a little bit darker like that. That looks pretty good. Now this step is optional, but I'd highly recommend it because it'll allow you to add even more detail to the model. So I'm going to be using decal machine to drop some decals on here. So before I do that, I'm actually just going to smart apply everything on here and then smart apply everything on here. And then same for these pieces because I'm just going to join this entire mesh together since I'm done with it. Cool. And what I want to do here, as a matter of fact, is quickly see how this looks in rendering mode. So we're going to go into the rendering panel here. I'm going to use the same HDRI abandoned slipway. So we'll go to environment texture and then open that. That looks really, really nice. Definitely like how that looks. So we'll just go back into material mode. And I do want to show you one thing. Um, so we could add in bevels here and I'd always recommend dropping bevels. You just select everything and then add a small little bevel in here. It kind of adds a nice reflection on the edges, but um, sometimes you might get like overlaps and stuff. So instead of using a regular bevel, I'm just going to go ahead and use the bevel shader. So what we can do is go to the shader editor and check this out. Shift A, input, and then bevel. And if we connect this up to the normal slot, we'll get a, uh, a bevel, but we can't see it in look dev. We have to actually go into rendered mode but you'll be able to see the difference. Notice how it's really soft. I don't want it to be this soft, so we'll put the radius to 0 0.02 or maybe 0 0.01. But you can kind of see there's a nice edge highlight now, which we did not have before. See that? Looks really clean. And then I'll just control C that one and then copy it to this material as well. Connect it up. So basically we just have a procedural bevel going on here. It looks almost identical, so really nice. So now we're just going to add in some more decals. So um, we have a ton of decals, by the way, if you want to pick up our decal pack on our store. Um, I still think we have a few free ones on our Gumroad page as well, but Gumroad we're slowly kind of phasing out now. Um, but yeah, you can, you can get decals for free. Um, just go to Machine's website. He has a big list of them. Now we're just going to use this one. I think this is from our... Patreon, once we, which we have uh, since discontinued, but if you're on our membership program, you should have access to these. And like I said, um, we have some free decal packs you can download anyways. And I'm just going to make kind of like a nice rotation. I don't want it to be super like even, just kind of indicate it was kind of rotated maybe. And then we'll just alt click on project. I've actually mapped my decal machine hotkey to the V key. I think by default it's like the D key but I remap mine. So if you go to decal machine, you can uh, change the default keys here. I've mapped all of mine to the V key. And then maybe we could use like an on and off switch. So I believe I have one in here. Can rotate this 90 degrees over the X, or maybe in your case, the Y. And we'll just have like a nice little switch right there. looks pretty good and then maybe we could put a decal so I'm gonna use one of our corporation decals you can get these for free so I'm just gonna go and grab I don't know something like this and then we'll actually rotate it this way cuz I'm gonna rotate the entire piece at the end and I want this to more or less be even so R Z Z let's try to get that centered kind of and then we'll press some um, we'll project it like that and now we have this nice little logo right there and let me go ahead and select everything and rotate it 90 degrees or negative 90 degrees over the X so now we kind of have like this um like standing up effect and that looks pretty good to me so now what we need to do is set up the render and I recently made a video on a really simple beginner friendly way to set up renders I'm gonna be using the same technique here so we're just gonna go into rendering mode and it should look pretty decent already so what I'm gonna do is add in a plane and I want this plane to go right here right below that okay and we can really scale this up. Now keep in mind, 
Um, super white floors are going to reflect a lot of light onto the mesh. So what we can do is add a new material to the floor, make it a bit darker, maybe make it metallic, and then maybe drop the roughness a bit so we have like a nice reflection here on the device and it'll just kind of look a little bit more natural. You can kind of see the difference. Here's the before, very bright. Here's the after, a lot darker. Don't go too dark though, or it's gonna look bad. Now, as for adding in your camera, there's a few different ways we could do this. Um, I'm just gonna show you a nice, easy way to get a clean render. We're gonna add in the camera. I'm gonna go here to view, align view, and then align active camera to view. And by default, my resolution is 2560 by 1440, but I actually wanna make this, um, I'm gonna make this more rectangular. So we could use like a four by three ratio or something, or I could even just flip these, 1440, 2560. Then we kind of have like a rectangular effect like that. Now we have a very, very low, well not very low, but we have a 50 millimeter focal length. So um, what I tend to do in these situations to get a much cleaner render is I like to increase the focal length. And what this will do is it'll actually zoom this in. So if you're familiar with photography, you'll understand how this works. Um, I'm not a photographer, I just kind of used to this, but what we're gonna do is increase the focal length to about 225. The main numbers I use are 50, 135, and 225, and sometimes I use different ones, but these are good numbers. 225 is gonna give us a very orthographic type of view. So you're gonna see, if I change this to orthographic, it almost looks the same in terms of perspective as um, perspective set to 225. So to move this back, we just press the G key to grab it, Z, Z, we just kind of move it back. And like I said, this is almost like an orthographic view. So um, it's essentially the same thing, kinda. And I'm just gonna kind of move this in. We can move this up. And what we could even do is rotate it and press X twice and just keep playing with the positioning and do something kind of like that. And you can see this is a very, very clean angle. However, what I don't like is that I can't really read the logo right here. I don't like how the light's hitting it. So what we're gonna do is go here, pull out a new panel and go into the shader editor. We'll set this here to world. And as long as you have the node wrangler add-on turned on, it's built into Blender. Just turn it on here in preferences, type in node wrangler, turn that on. And we'll press control T and what we can do is essentially rotate the HDRI light around on the z-axis and you're gonna see we just kinda of get some different lighting and usually I'll do this in Eevee because it's a little bit quicker so I'm just gonna hop into Eevee real quick and do that and we can just kinda of see you know how the lights hitting it here this is a very bad lighting setup you're gonna see that if we go back into cycles so make sure the lights actually hitting it from the front I see a lot of people make their models look a lot worse just because they have bad lighting but um, we can just kind of eyeball this. You don't have to be super crazy precise. Just make sure you're highlighting the areas of interest, which is going to be, you know, more the front here. So maybe we could do four, I think 403 had a good number. And there we go. You're going to kind of see the difference. Here's the original at zero, which is actually, I don't know, maybe zero is a little bit better. Something about that I like, but I'm going to move this a little bit more. This is really something you just have to kind of feel out. So you could even go in like 45 degree increments and just kind of see what you like, what you don't like. You get the idea. This one's actually pretty clean. I, I really like how this lighting is. So what we could actually do instead of rotating the HDRI, we could add in a reflector. And basically what a reflector does, remember when I showed you that a uh, super white floor will reflect light up? In the same manner, we can just add in a regular plane, add a new material, make it as um, bright as possible with a really high roughness, and this will be our reflector. So you want to make sure when you position this, it hits the, uh, it reflects the light where you want it, but at the same time, it's not inside of the camera's view, and that's the hardest part, I'd say getting that right. So you're just gonna have to really experiment, see what works for you, what doesn't, you know. Just kind of play with it. And 
you're just going to see you're going to get different results based off of the different positioning. I might actually make this a tad bit darker. So if I delete that and then undo it, you can kind of see the difference. It's just highlighting the left a little bit more. So just kind of play with it, see what you like, see what you don't like. But um, that's really up to you. I'm going to make this uh, reflector a little bit darker. Probably a bit overkill, but I don't know. It's just going to give you a little bit of a different effect there. Anyways, at this point, what I want to do is I want to render this piece out. Before I do that, let me actually move this camera back just a little bit so it's not like super choked inside the frame. Maybe move that over a bit so that way there's some more breathing space in the front. If you guys haven't picked it up yet, grab our Rendering University course. We discuss a lot of things when it comes to rendering, camera angles, lighting, you know, breathing space, all this different types of stuff. Uh, is all inside of that course if you're interested, but um, I want to make sure there's a little bit of breathing space here in the front for this so it'll look a bit nicer. And I think this will be a decent render right here. So all we need to do now is um, go to render, turn on the denoise option, and we don't need like a super high sample count. We'll put this to like 300, and then we'll just, um, I usually render in solid view, so we'll press F12 and render it. And here it is. This only took me 22 seconds to render, so even if you have a weaker machine, it should render uh, relatively quickly. So uh, there it is. Pretty decent, and you could always reposition this if you wanted to, but that's kind of up to you. Now one final thing I usually do as well is I delete out everything in the backdrop. I make sure the film setting here in the render panel is set to transparent, so that way the background here is, um, well, transparent. And then what I do is I render this piece out as well, and this will basically provide us with a cutout when we're doing any sort of editing in our editing software. So you don't have to let this one render fully. I just press escape to cancel it, and then you can go ahead and render or uh, save this image as well. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick rundown of how I do my edits. Very simple. I use Photoshop. You could use Affinity Photo as well. So what I usually do is I, I take the image. I duplicate the main layer with Control J so we have a backup. So I can always go back to the original layer to see the difference or whatever. And what I also do is I take that cutout render that we made, the transparent, and if I shift click and drag this over and move this down to the bottom, we're just going to turn it off. Now if I control click on this, we have a selection directly around it. This can be very useful if we just want to edit the piece and not the backdrop. So what I'm going to do is take this layer zero copy. Control shift a to go into the camera raw filter and I'm just going to brighten this image up a little bit and let me Make sure you can see it This is very simple. We're just going to increase the lift the brightness a little bit the exposure rather Make it a little bit brighter see the difference and a lot of people just really like to Click the sliders drag them all the way to the right. That's not the way to edit you want to do very small incremental effects to your edits Okay so at this point, um, what I want to do is add a little bit of clarity as well. And this is where I can use this uh, cutout. I'm going to control click on that cutout. And then if I go back into the camera raw filter with control shift A, now the changes I make will only be added to this cutout here. So I'm going to increase the clarity a little bit. And whenever you lift clarity, you should also lift the shadows a bit as well. And you're going to see, you can press control D to get rid of that selection. And you can already see the difference. Here's the before and after. This adds a little bit of clarity to it, kind of makes it pop. See what I mean? And this last part is probably the most effective part because if you look at any type of metal, there's all these little types of like spectacles. I don't know what they're called, but every single metal, as far as I know, uh, has it. And the way we can imitate that here in, um, in Photoshop, we'll control click on this again, control shift A to go into the camera raw filter. And to imitate that effect for metal, what we're going to do is add in a little bit of film grain. So I'm going to go down here to effects. We can increase the grain. See that? You don't want to go too high, but you're going to kind of see we get this nice little set of film grain in there. And I just want to make it kind of nothing too crazy, but just enough to see. Click OK. Yeah, 
looks really really nice and you can always drop the opacity a bit um, what I would actually recommend doing is pressing control J and doing this on a separate layer so we're working more or less non-destructively oops let me make sure I'm doing it on here and yeah just add a little bit of film grain onto your model shouldn't be too heavy but it should be kind of distinct right there you should be able to see it cool and now the last thing we could do is introduce a little bit of contrast and a really easy way to do this that Ryu taught me actually is you go to the curves and you click on this hand and you can select a bright area of the model and kind of lift that and then select a darker area of the model and kind of drop that and that'll introduce a little bit of local contrast onto the uh, onto the model here and I just think it looks a little bit nicer kind of see the difference if I alt click before and after so we're doing very small changes but all these changes kind of make it pop a bit more and this can be a night and day difference on your portfolio which is why I really recommend editing your work and then sometimes that you could also do uh, I use plugins for this by the way but I'm just showing you an easy way to do it in Photoshop directly um, what we could also do is add in a little bit of color balance and you could even kind of play with the different color tones here give a little bit more blue maybe in the mid tones and just kind of see what you like just kind of a nice cooler feel to the device kind of gives you the idea that this device might be a little bit cold when you touch it you know what I mean so it's a pretty cool way to do it and what we could also do I'll show you this cool thing we could go to the color lookup panel down here and there's actually a lot of different presets and if you control click through them or just scroll through them you can kind of see the different presets you have so these are pretty cool if you just want to get a quick uh, nice and easy um, effect here so I'm not gonna go with any of these crazy ones but maybe like you know this one could be okay or even this one could be okay but I personally use infinite color I'd recommend purchasing this it's quite expensive but if you're serious about editing your work it's a very cool plugin and you can just keep clicking through these you'll get a nice little um, different effects you can kind of cycle through and then it's always a good idea to add in your branding so I could just you know um, copy and paste this in our blender bros branding kind of pull this down here right and then just drop the opacity a bit and just like that you have uh, some branding but let me shift click and drag this one in there we go for some reason it was like kind of blurry pull that down drop the opacity a bit and there you go so nice and easy way to edit your work and at the end what you could do is press Control alt shift and e that'll combine all the layers together and right at the end what i like to do is add in a little bit of vignette so you can just go back into the camera raw filter drop a bit of vignette on here kind of play with the roundness and you know the midpoint here or whatever you get the idea and there you go just kind of see what you like so that's it for today's video guys, I hope this variety with some value gave you a nice and easy way to create a simple model but also a really simple render with a little bit of post processing here. So thanks again for watching and if you guys want to check out some of our products head over to our website. We have a ton of cool Blender hard surface modeling courses, products, asset packs, things like that. I think you'll really enjoy the stuff we have over there. So thanks for watching, see you in the next video.